Jack Fleming, I'm an inspector in the Philadelphia Police Department. I work for the Operational Support Division. Uh, we're here today to speak about uh, the excessive amount of rain and the potential for flooding. Um, with the additional two to three inches of rain that we're expecting over the next 24 hours, couple that with what we received over the weekend, uh, Philadelphia Police Department is asking its residents to use common sense in traveling, especially in low-lying areas. We've identified some of those low-lying areas, uh, Maniunk, um, Main Street in Maniunk, River Road in Upper Roxborough, the Cobb Creek Parkway in West Philadelphia. Uh, the length of Kelly Drive. Kelly Drive generally from Hunting Park to Midvale Avenue in East Falls is traditionally affected the worst. However, uh, with additional flooding, we have seen other parts of Kelly Drive up to the Art Museum affected with floodwaters. And finally, Columbus Boulevard. Uh, again, a large tract of Columbus Boulevard, but specifically between Christian and Ray Street. So over the next 24 hours, uh, we'll be working with our city and state partners to ensure that we have additional officers uh, with their eyes on those hot spots. Um, we want to be able to assist, be ready to assist in closing down an area uh, should we receive a call or, again, with our own eyes seeing it and realizing that it's unsafe for uh, vehicles or pedestrians, we want to be able to close those areas down quickly. Um, the latest information that we received that Wednesday's high tides will occur at 12.11 a.m., and then again at 12.26 p.m. So those are two times that we're keeping an eye on. Um, we just want people, we want to stress to let people know, uh, avoid fast moving water. Um, as, uh, as little as six inches of water, which doesn't look that deep, but moving very quickly, that's enough to knock an adult over. Um, it takes just 12 inches of rushing water to carry most cars away, two feet for an SUV. People sometimes believe falsely with an SUV that they can make it through. We don't encourage that. Um, standing next to me is Lieutenant Andy Napoli of the department's Marine unit. Uh, Lieutenant Napoli and his unit, uh, they're gonna be staffing throughout the night uh, with their emergency rescue gear. That includes uh, inflatable, um, uh, emergency rescue gear including inflatable boats, rescue lines, and flotation devices. Uh, finally, the commanding officer of the traffic unit, he's gonna be coordinating with the commanding officers of the district units and uh, they're gonna coordinate, and when we get information that specific hotspots are starting to back up or we have concerns, we wanna immediately get officers out there and shut those areas down, and we're gonna share that information as well through the City of Philadelphia's social media channels. Uh, the ultimate goal is gonna to be to get through this onslaught of rain um, safely and get things back to normal and get the roadways back to normal as soon as possible. I just real quick want to introduce uh, Lieutenant Andy Napoli of the Marine Unit, and then we'll be uh, ready to answer any questions you might have. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, again, Lieutenant Andrew Napoli, N-A-P-O-L-I. I'm assigned to the uh, Police Marine Unit. Uh, we want to reiterate uh, what the inspector was just talking about. Uh, flooding, even though it may look safe, it is not safe. Uh, what may look like two inches of water could be two, three feet of water. So. If you see flooding, don't go through it. Don't let your ego get the best of you. Drive around it and take another route. We know that people have to get around, especially during the nighttime hours, whether it's emergencies, going to work. Uh, we're gonna do our best as a department to make sure we shut down streets as necessary when flooding does occur. But we see it all the time where cars will go around those barricades, drive on sidewalks. We wanna make sure, when we get the word out, please do not do that because what you think may be safe may not be safe, and then we have to respond and possibly try attempt to save a life. So we want to try to avoid that as much as possible. Thank you. Yep. So we saw earlier, um, especially I, I was over over in East Falls, we saw people already like getting, getting barriers ready. So um, have police already been out doing some of the pre, you know, preparedness work uh, this morning? We have the traffic, uh, specifically the traffic unit has been doing that. And keep in mind, folks that live in these falls, especially people that have been living there for a long time, they understand that where they live does get uh, disproportionately affected whenever there is uh, heavy rains or, or any kind of flooding. I guess, question, what happens to somebody legally if they're front moving a barricade or trying to drive through a road that is well, I don't know, uh, I don't want to get into what would legally happen. Certainly our goal would not be to, uh, when we're trying to uh, either save someone or inform them, I think it would be more of a informational thing at first. If that person continued to resist, then I suppose we would take it to another level, but it would just be an educational thing. 
listen, this is here for your safety, uh, don't move it. And I know that sounds pretty generic, but I think that's where we'd start, and then it would raise, rise to another level if that and person. Are there tickets involved that you could also see somebody moving a barricade to try to get through? Are there tickets involved? Do you know if there's tickets involved with that? There can be, yes. Okay. What would those penalties be? I don't know, sir. Is this part of the, this uh, abundance of uh, cost? Is this part of like a new leadership for the Philadelphia police? Not brand new, so like you know something like this where you guys are just trying to be proactive and help some message. Yeah, I think it's what it, I think it's more of a proactive thing. I don't know if it has anything to do with. Um, yeah, new leadership or whatever, but anything like this that affects uh, public safety, you know, we get called on to uh, what's our role in it. And uh, I think we just named some of those steps in our role, which is to keep people safe. Um, a lot of the things we're saying are very common sense, but it maybe doesn't hurt to uh, talk about common sense things and let people know, like, don't do this, don't do that. It's not safe to do this. Um, and I think that's just, it's just out of an abundance of caution more than it is a new administration. You mentioned common sense. Um, talk to us about your message for people. We know that people have to get home. We know that sometimes road closures are inconvenient. But talk about you know the danger, the potential human life inconvenience if people take that risk, and then not only putting their, their life in danger, but also police and refugees in danger as well. Yeah, I think we've all found ourselves at a time where like we know the quickest way to get from point A to point B, and then you get stopped by the police, whether it be a crime scene or an auto accident. And even though it is inconvenient. Uh, once again, common sense has to take over that that short-term inconvenience, um, it gets uh, superseded by uh, a public safety and that personal, that person's personal safety. Uh, there are alternate routes. We're in a, a, a very large city. There are many roadways. There's alternate routes pretty much for everything. Do you see a little uh, congestion or tips for pedestrians? There's going to be people out, out walking in the rain. Anything that People, obviously, people are exercise, they run, runners run, uh, walkers want to walk. Uh, definitely uh, bright colored gear if it's necessary, uh, certainly if it's not necessary. Um, I mentioned some of the, the areas that are affected. Uh, um, certainly we want them to stay out of those areas. Uh, definitely low-lying areas, you don't want them to, to walk or, or, or run. Um, so again, unless it's absolutely necessary, we would ask them not to if they had to or if they want to be out uh, maybe brightly colored clothing. Anything else on that? Yeah. You said the areas may add uh, Tony Drive and Central Park have extra crews out there right now, or you will have extra crews out there to assess those roads throughout the night? Well, we, we're doing some prep work, which was one of the other situations that came up. And as the night moves on, we will have extra uh, crews out there. And um, again, we know already this is not the first time this has occurred. Uh, so we'll have people in specific areas uh, these are areas that we know uh, that we're going to have problems. There's areas in West Philadelphia along Cobbs Creek Parkway. Those are traditional areas that flood. So uh, uh, the patrol officers, the traffic officers, the Marine unit, we'll all work together, coordinate together, and uh, yeah, we'll try to stay ahead of it. I do think this isn't your first rodeo, but flooding is, you know, Philadelphia's It's interesting you say that. I mean, Ben Salem is, uh, we, we were, we encounter many other townships that are close to us. And Ben Salem being one of them, Upper Darby, another one. So they experience a lot of the problems we do. So yes, we do coordinate uh, with those individuals. Um, and as you mentioned, it's not the first time we've dealt with this. So this is just something that uh, you get out uh, the playbook and you see what works and you keep utilizing what works and you change things that don't work and you just always try to update and improve your uh, your performance. Uh, Mr. Napoli, maybe you had spoken about it, but um, are there going to be certain places where you're going to have some of your Marine unit uh, stationed? And maybe you could talk about that? Sure, yeah. So as the inspector said, there are certain areas that are prone to flooding within the city. Uh, River Road, uh, Main Street in Maniunk, West Philadelphia, Cobb Street Parkway, Columbus Boulevard, Kelly Drive. I will have crews in those areas, monitoring those areas throughout the evening and throughout the night. And if we see something, uh, our, our goal is to prevent things from happening. So if we can see it early enough, we can contact traffic units or the district units, have them start to put closures in place to prevent people from driving into those areas. All good. All right. Thank you.